Hi, I'm Thak. Uh, if you've made it this far, it means that you are totally into this process and you might want to learn a little bit more about it. So I'm going to talk about the process of repose, or sometimes I hear it pronounced repouche, but uh, I think that's more of the, the actual French pronunciation, but uh, most of the people in North America call it repose. Uh, you can also call it embossing, but basically what it is is taking sheet metal and um, creating sculpture by pushing out. Um, it's pushing from the surface and from behind back and forth to create something. So I just grab um, a shield that I did several years ago, but it was a shield here and it gives you, it's quite large so you can see the process um, depicted I think a little clearer than usual. I can get the dust off of here. But essentially the way this has started is by forming a dome in the center um, and I usually raise that and I've talked about that earlier in this video series um, and then from the inside I use various stakes to push against there and the stakes um, hold it in place and then I work from the surface using hammers and eventually as I refine the detail getting into things with chisels and working that way over various stakes or balls or wooden blocks. So this allows me to be able to basically push that um, flat sheet back and forth until it is into the 3D effect that I'm looking to achieve. Um, there we have it. Some of the tools that I use for that are the balls and stakes, and you can see I've just got a little handful of them here. I've got quite a few more. Uh, <clears throat> these I make myself, and most of them were made on the fly. I'll be working on a project, and I, I, I look at what I've got on hand, and it just Suddenly it'll kind of strike me. I need I don't have the right thing. I need something that does this and that's how I've designed my tools. So uh, This was kind of designed in an evolutionary way as I needed the tools and I would just make up pieces I forged them out grind them and you're able to make the stakes that are appropriate uh, conversely the hand tools are usually oftentimes pretty much the opposite effect of that. And if you come in real tight here, you can see some of the tools that I use. They usually just start out as chisels um, or punches, and then I just modify them, either forge them or most often cases, I'll take a cold chisel and grind it into um, whatever the appropriate shape. For example here, this is something which is a dull chisel with a very slight curvature in it, and that's one of the tools that I use a lot. That's one of the 80-20 um, type tools. So it's used um, doing a lot of the shape. Okay, so then I've got other shapes that I come up with. This one, uh, teardrop shape, I don't use it very often, but when I need it, it's, it's one of those um, specialty shapes that, that really comes in handy. I've got a fairly uh, sharp curvature there, a tight radius, and then smaller, dull chisels. So the chisels that I use um, are, are usually dull, but then I have ones, as I get into finer detail, they get sharper and sharper, but you must be very careful that you don't actually punch through the metal that you're working on. Um, also, I have a variety of these sorts of shapes here, which are flats, but which have curvatures um, around the edges that allows me to get in to, to push um, metal back and, and create uh, a background um, as I need to. So it's just shapes like this and again these have evolved over time as I get into a situation and I need it and it's like how am I going to do that um, and then I quickly run over the grinder with a tool and then just kind of mock it up and once I figure out something that works then I, then I spend a little more time making it a functional tool. So that is some of the punches. So my hammers are not uh, professional silversmithing hammers or, or anything like that. Basically most of them are modified ball peen hammers that I pick up at uh, antique shops or, or flea markets for a couple of bucks and then I'll just take the head and forge it out, modify it. This one is quite handy. It's, it's my raising hammer for starting process. So quite dull but I'm able to with this little um, beak on here reach around and ergonomically it allows me to get 
uh, into places quite easily. This is my, um, just my common raising hammer, and this is one that is a little bit sharper and allows me to get into um, some finer detail. And I've done, I've had this hammer now for about 30 years and it has served me very well. Um, it just is kind of the, my basic go-to as far as uh, a tool I need when I'm doing armor type work or, or repose. Uh, starting out, I just take machinist hammers and make domes in them for dishing hammers and I'll do different radiuses of domes so that's pretty straightforward um, and once again they're just different configurations of hammers that I'll make and then just lots of ball peen hammers and polish the faces depending on what they're used for some are more scarred up than others but it's not rocket science as far as what you need for the tools, it's just basically how they use them. And I started out early on, I only had a few hammers and a few chisels and stuff like that. I was still able to make sculptures um, and do repose fairly decently, but as I got into it over the years, the tools started accumulating. I end up getting a whole rack and, and tons of tools, um, but I still use um, only usually a handful of them at a time. So in addition to the stakes and punches and hammers and stuff, um, for dishing or working from the inside out, I have um, some shot bags. I also have sandbags, but uh, both of these have lead shot, like buckshot from a shotgun. Um, this is my tiny little one, which allows me to get into places and I'm actually able to put it on the other bag a lot of times and work into that. But this gives a lot of resistance, so I'm able to work shapes into it. Lead shot is much better than just sand itself. So, um, this is my big shot bag here which is so torn up now the last time we used it it started burst this hole here and you can see the actual I don't know if you can come in really tight and see the focus but that is the lead shot. They're just tiny little balls of lead. Avoid eating those if you can. In addition to um, using shot bag for dishing into I also have my trustworthy stump. This is ironwood, this stump. I've had this for a very long time and a lot of armor in it, but basically it just has a few depressions carved out of the surface. They're quite shallow. I've got one that's deeper here and one that, that's medium and then one that is barely anything at all. And then just a lot natural cracks in the wood. I use those as valley stakes as well. Um, but a lot of shaping actually happens into this stump and if you're going to get into armor you got to find yourself a good hardwood stump. Ironwood is awesome if you can locate it. I, I stumbled across this one. Um, but anyhow these are kind of the basic toolkit that you need if you really want to get into the embossing or sculptural type of armor. So these are the tools that I use. Um, we would like to do more videos, maybe a more technical one on the repose process um, that we really tighten up all the focus on what we're doing um, specifically with that sculptural shaping. So if you'd like to see that, uh, leave it in the comments below and um, just any other questions that you want to know about this. I ran through this fairly quickly here, but things may not be clear to you. So, so feel free to leave your questions um, and I will answer them in a future video. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate your, uh, your viewership and uh, hope that you stay with us. We want to make some really cool videos coming up in the future. So thanks a lot. Back out.